NASA's Artemis 3 mission is a crucial step in the agency's plans to establish a sustainable human presence on the moon. It is currently planned for 2025 and will mark humanity's first return to the lunar surface in more than 50 years. NASA and SpaceX will make history by sending the first humans to explore the proximities of the lunar south pole. But what will this mission really look like? From day one all the way to re-entering back into Earth's atmosphere. And why will Starship HLS land precisely on its south pole? By landing astronauts on the moon, NASA aims to demonstrate the capabilities and technologies necessary for sustainable human exploration of the moon and beyond. The journey begins with Orion, NASA's crew spacecraft that will take astronauts from Earth to the moon and back. The astronauts will launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida on the Space Launch System, the only rocket that is fitted and powerful enough to carry Orion, the crew and their supplies. The crew itself will come from a diverse group of intensively trained astronauts with unique skills. Orion will first reach Earth orbit for system checks and solar panel adjustments before SLS interim cryogenic propulsion stage propels it toward the moon. The crew will adjust their course during this several day journey to the moon and finally enter a lunar near rectilinear halo orbit chosen by NASA for its fuel efficiency and communication benefits. In the future, NASA plans to assemble the Gateway Lunar Space Station in this very same halo orbit as an outpost for future Artemis missions. SpaceX has been selected by NASA to provide the human landing system, aka Starship HLS, that will transfer the Artemis 3 astronauts from Orion in lunar orbit to the surface of the moon and back again. After Starship has met all of NASA's requirements and standards for crew safety, which include multiple tests and an uncrewed demo mission, the spacecraft will launch to Earth orbit, refuel from a storage depot, and travel to the same lunar orbit as Orion to await the Artemis 3 crew. Once both spacecraft are in the same orbit, Orion will dock with Starship. Once the crew and their supplies are ready, two astronauts will board Starship and two will remain in Orion. Orion will undock and back away from Starship to remain in its near rectilinear halo orbit for roughly one orbit around the moon, which will last about 6.5 days. This will match the length of the surface expedition, so as Orion completes its orbit, the two-person surface crew will finish their work on the lunar soil in time to launch back up and meet the spacecraft. While two of the astronauts will remain in orbit performing their part of the mission, the other two astronauts will descend down to the lunar surface and carry out the more explorative part of the mission. Exploration is a key word here because for the first time in a very long while, humans will be physically exploring a new area on a celestial body other than Earth. More specifically, humans will be exploring the vicinities of the lunar south pole. But why this area in particular? Why the South Pole? Well, due to its scientific relevance. The lunar South Pole features craters that are unique in that the near constant sunlight does not reach their interior. Such craters are called traps that contain a fossil record of hydrogen, water ice and other volatiles dating from the early solar system. And so the human exploration of this region through the Artemis missions offers a unique chance for scientific breakthroughs. Astronauts will carry out field geology, set up instruments and gather samples that will shed light on the very nature of planetary processes and the character and origin of these substances present at the lunar poles. Volatiles or volatiles are substances that change from a solid to a gas state when exposed to moderate heat. For example, water ice cubes are composed of hydrogen and oxygen and start to melt at temperatures above 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius and boil when heated to the boiling point. The regions near the poles that are permanently shrouded in shadow act as reservoirs for various volatiles, each one of them with different melting and vaporization temperatures. According to Jake Bleacher, NASA's chief exploration scientist, the ability to extract deep core samples and maintain their temperature and vacuum properties all the way back to research facilities on Earth could lead to powerful discoveries not only about the volatiles, 
but also about the history of our solar system. This knowledge could have a profound impact on the future of deep space exploration and commerce, possibly leading to lunar resource mining to reduce the number of supplies like oxygen and hydrogen, which are key life-sustaining elements and ingredients for rocket fuel sent from Earth to support humans in deep space. However, this mission will not be easy to carry out, since NASA and SpaceX will be landing on one of the most extreme and challenging areas of the Moon. The lunar south pole is a place of extreme conditions. The Sun is either just below or above the horizon, leading to temperatures reaching as high as 130 Fahrenheit or 54 degrees Celsius during periods of light. Despite this, this region also features towering mountains that create very long shadows, and some deep craters nearby remain mostly shrouded in darkness, with some of them housing regions that have been in permanent shadow for billions of years and experience temperatures as low as minus 334 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 203 degrees Celsius. I guess those would be great places to store liquid nitrogen cheaply. All things considered, it is clear that descending to the lunar south pole will be challenging for astronauts as the rugged terrain and low light conditions make it difficult to assess the surface. Even with advanced sensors, it may be difficult to tell what the ground looks like. In case it becomes necessary, astronauts will be able to manually take control of the lander's onboard automated guidance system, just like Neil Armstrong did when the Eagle's guidance system steered them four miles off course, heading toward a field of boulders. Although it is also worth mentioning that, unlike Artemis astronauts, Armstrong had a clear sunlit view of the surface below. However, despite the disrupted view with shadows concealing important terrain features, Artemis 3 astronauts will have access to detailed maps from robotic missions such as the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter plus advanced training with technology that was not available to the Apollo crews. After the two astronauts aboard Starship have made it safely to the surface, their first task will be to ensure all systems are ready for their lunar surface stay. Then they will rest, eat, and recharge for the first full day of the expedition. During their time on the moon, the astronauts will carry out scientific tasks inside the starship and embark on a series of extravehicular explorations on the lunar surface. They will put on advanced spacesuits and use the starship's airlock and elevator to leave the ship and explore the area. While exploring the moon, the astronauts will capture images and video, do geology work, gather samples, and collect data to achieve specific scientific goals. As I mentioned earlier, the landscape at the lunar south pole will be vastly different from the equatorial region explored by the Apollo missions, with the sun barely showing itself just above the horizon and casting long, cold shadows. The astronauts will navigate with the help of headlamps and other advanced navigation tools. The data and materials collected during this mission will deepen our understanding not only of this unexplored region, but also of the moon as a whole and our solar system. Mission control teams on Earth will be in constant communication with the astronauts as they described their observations. Thanks to advanced communication technology, they will be able to share high-quality images and videos with the world, thus offering a new and unique human experience. I can't be the only one hoping for a 24-7 lunar Earth view live stream on YouTube, right? Upon finishing their moon surface expedition, the two astronauts will depart from the moon and return back to orbit aboard Starship to meet up with their other crew members inside the Orion spacecraft. After docking, the crew will spend up to five days in orbit, exchanging samples between vehicles and getting ready for the trip back to Earth. Once they arrive at the best departure point for their orbit, with all four astronauts on board the Orion capsule, they will undock and start Orion's engines, propelling the spacecraft past the moon and towards Earth. The crew will travel at a speed of roughly 25,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers per hour as they enter Earth's atmosphere. With the help of 11 parachutes, the spacecraft will then land in the Pacific Ocean where it and the crew will be met by the US Coast Guard and US Navy. The Artemis 3 mission will be a remarkable accomplishment in the history of deep space exploration, an extraordinary combination of cutting-edge engineering and human ingenuity. The astronauts' observations, specimens, and data gathered will broaden our knowledge of our solar system as well as of our own planet, while inspiring future generations. The mission marks the beginning of a future where humans will regularly visit the moon 
and human space exploration to other planets comes increasingly within reach. Each Artemis mission will enhance humanity's understanding of space exploration as well as help improve the technology necessary to one day put humans on the surface of Mars. Thank you all for watching and sticking to the end. I really appreciate your support. Have a nice day, whatever you are. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye.